Recently, I made a LinkedIn post asking academics to provide their best advice to incoming PhD students starting this fall. And oh my goodness, you all came through. There are now 98 comments on that post. Um, and I wish I could share every single one of them, but I did boil down the advice to around 15 of the best piece of advice that I personally wish I had known about when I started my PhD in 2009. Let's get straight into the video. The first thing is that whether you're in your PhD for five, six, or seven years, that time is going to go by like wind. Um, when I was in my PhD program, I didn't know when I was going to be finishing. Most people in my PhD program uh, finished around the six year mark. And so I thought I knew that it was going to be right around then. It was about five and a half years. And when I think about that time, even though when you are starting out five years or six years looks like a really long time, it goes by so fast. So what I want to say here is, you know, soak it all up, enjoy the experience. Um, but as you do all of that, a lot of the things that we're going to be, I'm going to be sharing and we are going to be sharing because it was the whole community are going to be sharing, are going to be relevant that you start to build foundations for to set yourself up for success for after your PhD, because after your PhD is going to last way longer than your PhD program. When I was doing my PhD, I had access to health insurance. Okay. Now I learned that not everybody has this. I my PhD is in microbiology and immunology. The program had a grant and being this grant allowed us not just to get a stipend, um, but also to get some form of health insurance. And I would learn that that health insurance was actually really excellent health insurance because I had a baby during my PhD. And I don't know about everywhere else, okay? But having a baby in the US is very expensive. Healthcare in the US is crazy expensive. And when the bill came, it was a huge bill, but the health insurance actually took care of, I want to say about 90% of it. So it's very, very grateful for that, that that was made available to us. And so if you have health insurance, this is the advice I want to give you. If you have health insurance, make sure you use it, make sure you go to the doctor, make sure you, you know, what's things that have to do with your health that is covered under your health insurance policy that you take advantage of that because you know, I haven't, I don't think I've had a plan that good <laughs> ever since. So take advantage of that. Another thing to take advantage of are the resources at your university. So the universities, especially universities in the US, but I think that this is pretty common at, at, in other places as well, have resources like writing centers, they may have mental health counseling, they may have things like helping you, you know, put your PhD thesis together, PhD review, thesis review centers, um, they may have career services, right? Take advantage and learn more about these services. There's so many, I remember going to a campus um, and there was, at this time I was interviewing for a particular job on that campus, and one of the complaints that their career services, because it was a job in career services, and one of the complaints that the director made was that we don't have a lot of PhDs or we don't have a lot of students coming to seek out our services, even though we have all these amazing programs for them. So yeah, I've heard people say, oh, career services people, are not helpful. I kind of beg to in a, in a, a little bit because I've seen some of the work that some of them are doing from my interactions with them on LinkedIn and some of them are doing good work, right? And so that's just one example. Go find out what services are available to you. Usually you can find out about these resources on your university's website and learn how you can use those to your advantage. Don't focus on your research alone. Okay, so I remember the first time I wrote this on LinkedIn. Oh my goodness, that was one of my very first viral posts and um, it, it went crazy. But I'm not saying don't focus on your research, right? Don't focus on your research alone. In the current environment that we have, just putting your head down. And I was one of those people. I was one of those people that believed if I put my head down, if I get good grades, then my work will end up speaking for itself. And the painful reality is that maybe that happens for 1% of people, right? And I wasn't in that 1% of people. For the rest of us, we have to speak up. We have to let people know about our work. We have to network, right? And so don't just focus on your research alone. Be strategic, especially about what you want to do after your PhD. 
If you want to go into academia, be strategic about that and begin to make those connections that lead you on that path. You want to work outside of academia, you know, kind of know the, the, the career paths you want to be on, begin to have conversations, right? Maybe begin to pick up some skills. And that was another piece of advice that a lot of people gave actually, where it's like pick up skills, right? That may be relevant to you after your your phd so and a skill that i really regret not learning during my phd is a data analysis tool like r right i didn't use that tool i use mostly excel and prism for my stuff very, very simple stuff right but i wish i had learned a tool like r for data analysis because it would it would definitely like blow my job opportunities or job outlook wide open right i can still learn it um but that the point i'm trying to make is that open yourself up, up open yourself up to opportunities beyond just your research live your life your phd is not your whole life and there were several pieces of advice that really echoed this and i totally agree like i said i got married if you watch one of my earlier earlier videos on this channel i talk about how i got married and had a baby right during my phd um i was living my life right um but sometimes i feel like i wasn't even living my life to my fullest your phd is not your whole life your phd is an important part of your life but it's not your whole life and so as you um do all the things that you need to do to excel there give yourself time to rest give yourself time to rejuvenate uh, i just uh, i just did the video around um slow productivity which is a book i highly recommend for incoming phd students and also people that are done with their phds for embracing a work habit or a work culture that is not so frantic and frenetic and drives you crazy right live your life i love this piece of advice that somebody gave about people that have PhDs that are lab-based. So I did, I kind of did this. So I'll read it to you. It says, if you have a PhD that is lab-based, listen to an audiobook while doing your experiments to 10x the value of that time. Sometimes by the end of a two to three hour experiment, I'm done listening to a book. And this is entirely true. So during my PhD, I had to do mouse work. One of the models I used to study the disease I was studying, to study the, um, the, the question I was studying was a mouse model. And so I'd be in the mouse room sometimes for two, three, four hours, right? And these rooms had no windows and clothes. You don't even know whether it's dark or it's light outside. And so usually I'd be working on the mice and I'd have a podcast going. At that time, I, I don't even think I knew about audiobooks, but I had a, a podcast going that I thought was interesting. And that's why I picked up a lot of lessons in entrepreneurship, right? That I'm currently employing. If you're going to be doing something that's pretty repetitive and mindless, which was like kind of like my mouse work, then you could also be learning alongside doing that work. And totally agree. So if you have that situation, try, you can try this piece of advice. Being open-minded, right? This piece of advice, I think believe came from uh, Dr. Adrian. She said, I initially went for a PhD in bi biomedical engineering and left with an MS in biomedical informatics instead. And, you know, she went on to talk about how she thought she wanted to work in one field, but what she truly wanted to do was something else. And I think it's important to be open-minded and to give yourself permission um because i was an international student for a lot of people that are international students finishing with a master's degree sometimes it's is out of the question for some people um because <laughs> being an international student can be hard that that's a whole other topic but um not everybody may be able to do this but i think it's a good thought to have to realize that you can pivot right and it's okay to pivot and even it's okay to pivot from working in academia to outside of academia i say this all the time right so be open-minded you know be, be also be conscious of what it is that you're doing so that you can you can you can begin to pinpoint things you like things you don't like where you would like to work what you enjoy what you don't enjoy it's going to be super super helpful to even helping you as you plan for your life after academia and i'm talking so much about life after academia because again it lasts longer than your phd
finding a good system for taking notes okay this is another one that came up and listen i was terrible at this i did not have a good system for taking notes back then i didn't know about things like i don't think an even notion existed i think the only the tool that was big back then was a tool called evernote and i don't even know if evernote still exists and i used evernote for other things but somehow it didn't occur to me that i could use it to organize my notes but yes i would say that having a good system for taking notes is going to be invaluable and having a good system for also organizing those notes is going to be invaluable and I think this is where I was struggling is I could take the notes but organizing them listen was not my strong suit I, did, I didn't work on it very well but if you can work on that on learn having a system for taking notes and having a system for organizing those notes is going to help you to with your with your dissertation it's going to help you with writing your papers it's going to help you you know to always be fresh with your ideas because you can be like oh there was this you know, somebody says something in a, in a seminar, somebody asks you a question you don't know, or you've forgotten the answer for, you can go back to your notes and refer to that and um, and always look knowledgeable, you know, because we're, we're not always going to remember everything, but having a good system for taking notes and recalling those notes is is is, is a game changer. And I have somewhat of that right now. I, I, should, I should get better, but moving on. I love this response by Dr. Summer Kim who said your cohort is not your competition they are your village. Now you may be thinking like this but not every graduate student thinks like this and I wish more people did and even with faculty even with everything I just wish more people saw people as less of a competitor and more of somebody I can collaborate with. Like in this space of what I'm doing with, with this content I produce for graduate students and, and early career researchers, for instance, you know, I always find that it's funny when there are people that are antagonistic to me because we're working in the same space. It doesn't make like, it doesn't make any sense to be antagonistic, but I love this point so much. Um, and I think having a collaborative spirit is always going to move everybody further than having a competitive good. There's like, there's good competition. Competition is a good thing, but when it becomes toxic competition, that's a problem. But yes, your cohort is not the competition. They are your village and they can support you in what you are doing. Patrina Pellet said, don't take it all too seriously. It's going to be great and it'll work out. I, I agree. I wish I, had, I wish I had told myself that when I was in graduate school. I, I somewhat mentioned this point earlier on when I was talking about, you know, whilst you're in graduate school, don't focus on your research alone. But I really like this point that Kwesi Opoku made. He says, the transferable and soft skills you pick up along the PhD journey rather than the actual PhD research topic will more often than not end up becoming the focus of your career. Don't underestimate the tangential skills you acquire from the process. 100% agree with Chrissy. You know, because when I work, like right now, what I do, I work in medical communications, okay? Most of my work is just writing things. And not just writing things, but also making sure that I understand what's going on in the market. Um, and how that piece fits into the overall marketing plan. And so if I had been said, oh, writing, writing is like, what's writing? I could have missed out on this whole entire career because I dismissed that. And so yes, it's true. Like a lot of skills that we think are tangential, that we think, are, you know, the other day I was talking to somebody and she was like, she got a job at Amazon doing what she does because she used a, just one software. There was this one software she was using during her PhD called ImageJ. A lot of bio, med medical scientists may know that. And because she had used ImageJ during her PhD, she got hired at Amazon. It was like the most random thing, right? Just this piece of random software to analyze these proteins and she got a job at Amazon. So the things that you think are like, <laughs> not important they may be the most important thing Josh Dalzal um, thank you for giving he, he gave a really great response but there was one line in his response that absolutely had me going which was faculty jobs and prizes they are jobs I think the whole reason one of the biggest reasons I started this channel was really to talk about working outside of academia as a PhD right and 
I think sometimes the reason why even that is important is because a lot of people have put working in academia somehow at the very, very top of the chain of jobs that are out there. But it's still a job. It's not a prize. And congratulations if you get a faculty job um, and you are doing well in that faculty job and that faculty job is paying you well. But that's not the norm for everyone. I, you know, I was teaching at a community college, absolutely loved it, loved the department. It didn't pay very well. Um, and maybe I could have continued there, right? But I found something else that would still draw on my skills, still draw on my knowledge and which paid better, right? And so if you find yourself in that place, I was actually having a conversation recently where the person was telling me, she she was told by someone in academia that she is too nice to be in academia. See, like that's just like that, that's just wrong. Anyway, so like if you face any of these things, like you want to make more money or a toxic environment or anything, please just see getting a faculty job as just a another type of job. It's not if you if you don't work in academia, you have not failed. Dr. Alifa Abdul Karim said, ask for help when you feel lost because we all feel lost at various points. And I remember this so well. This is actually not during my PhD, but during my postdoc, I remember telling my PI, I feel a little lost. Like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. And it's normal. If you ever feel like, I don't know what I'm doing, I feel lost, trust me, it's normal, okay? It's normal. There's also a, a lot of uh, conversation around your dissertation topic not needing to be the thing that defines your identity as a researcher, even if you choose to stay within academia, even if you choose to stay within research, right, as a vertical, that the stuff you did in your PhD doesn't have to define your identity as a researcher. You can branch off into various areas. I can't tell you the number of scientists, whether that's in academia or outside of academia, who had some kind of off topic, right, uh, 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 PhD dissertation talk, but now they're working in something else. Now, this is not the same as saying, I got a PhD in the biomedical sciences and now I'm going to go do something in mechanical engineering. The two different fields within your discipline, okay? Within your discipline, you don't have to allow your PhD dissertation topic to define your entire career. You can absolutely take the knowledge, take the skills that you learned, right? Take the skills especially that you've learned from one area into another area. Build your network early. This is then this is by uh, Sarah Snyder, who is an MSL recruiter and also a FarmD. I had a lot of people from these Eddies commenting on this post, which thank you all. We love you too. Um, and yes, building your network early is also important. Again, whether you choose to stay in academia or outside of it, having a network is going to help you more than you think or realize. So yes, build that network. I should go through your process source it feedback regularly and don't take that feedback as personal okay i remember when i was doing my phd i took some feedback personally it didn't help me very much now yes there are some people that are bullies and will try to bully you forget them okay forget them take like take the the meat and leave the bones out of it okay and because all the thing that feedback does as I, I write and you know, I always get feedback from my colleagues. It always, it always, and almost always makes things better. Right. And so solicit, solicit, blah, 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 blah. Solicit feedback early and often. Don't take things personally and allow that feedback to make your work better. Another response that was longer, but which I boiled down to one sentence because I loved it so much, was this one by Laura Sanders, Dr. Laura Sanders, who said, your research is not the product you are. And I thought that was so profound, right? Because again, a lot of the time we think our research is the most important thing, right? And I think that's a running thing through a lot of these pieces of advice I've given. We think our research is the most important thing, but the research is the byproduct of the whole process, right? So whilst your research is really an important component of your PhD program, the person you become through this process, right, is something that I think we should all focus on. I didn't, I didn't think of that when I was in my PhD, right? And now 
you know, in hindsight, I'm like, yeah, I became a different person. I, I gained a lot of knowledge. I gained a lot of skills. I, 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 I ask questions differently. And that has helped me. So realizing that your research is not necessarily the product, it's a great byproduct, but you yourself will be transformed and changed by this process is also a good way to think about your PhD program. These secrets are definitely going to help you to excel as a PhD student. And if you're an incoming PhD student in a program, comment below and let me know, and let me know which one of these resonated with you.